Hi everybody, um, can everybody hear me? I think you can give a little like thumbs up if you can. Um, open some of these notifications that are coming on through. I see there's plenty of people um, joining on board. Yep, they're all the thumbs up. Excellent, I can be heard. That's what I like to see. Right, thank you very much for coming today to this uh, presentation on um, how to make your email comms more engaging. Um, I'm going to crack straight on with some screen sharing. Just let me screen the share. 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 This one. There we go. Can everybody see my see the presentation? Okay, right. Let me get my notes over here. Right. Like I say, we're going to look today at making your um, emails more engaging. Uh, a little bit about us first, for, for those who don't know who we are. We're News App Communications, and we work with uh, various NHH trusts, uh, Network Rail, uh, Leeds University, to name but one, um, and a variety of local and county councils. My name's Darren Hepburn. I'm the Operations Director here at and Newsac. Uh, Newsac has been um, here now for about 18 years and see a lot of really good um, campaigns going through the system uh, with some of the accounts that I manage and a lot of our customers who are, who are here today on this webinar. So it's nice to see you all. And I thought we'd share some hints and tips that I've picked up over the years um, to help you make your emails just a, a little bit more engaging. Um, we will be sharing this video at the end. And if you've got any questions at all as we're going along, feel free to um, um, jot in. I'll get a little notification. So apologies if I'm a bit slow on picking that up as I'm, as I'm rattling through these slides because I don't want to um, go past our, our half an hour mark. Anyway, let's take a look. So what's the challenge that we face when it comes to, to email? Uh, the biggest challenge is how many comms uh, we get on a daily basis. We're getting thousands of, of email notifications, text alerts, pop-ups, WhatsApps, text messages, Facebook um, posts, things like that. They're all coming at us at a tremendous rate. It's a consumption overload, I, I like to call it. 20 years ago, uh, when we didn't have things uh, like the internet and social media and, and prevalent access to, to being online, we have about an attention span of around about 12 seconds. Unfortunately, that's now dropped down to, to eight seconds as, as human beings, which technically makes us dumber than goldfish, which is bad news for us, really. Uh, good news for goldfish, bad news for us. We've just got so much information coming at us um, at, at a fanatical rate, and there are distractions everywhere. Like I say, there are, there are meetings to attend, there are webinars to come to, there are emails, there are messages. They're coming at us at an absolutely fanatical rate, and that's the biggest problem we have as communicators, is cutting through the noise and creating engaging comms that's going to be read and received and appreciated and, and acted on. Um, it's all about raising that, that engagement on, on these campaigns compared to other ones that, that, that we're putting out. So the first thing we need to look at is, uh, is, our, is, our, is our communication, is our email, is it pitched at the right level? And there are, there are, there are two or three things that we can take a look at straight away. We can make sure that we're, even though this is a mass comms, whether it be retail or internal staff communications or external to a, to a subscription database, that we're still writing it to people from people. That's very, very important. If you see communications from last minute or laterooms.com or, or, any, or anyone like that, it's always Poppy at or Jessica at. It's always from a person, even though these emails are going out to millions of people. So try, trying to avoid the the no replies and the, um, and, the, and the name of the department at. Uh, make it from an actual um, physical person. Uh, that always makes a tremendous difference. Then it looks like it stands out from the inbox. Trying to, to steal the language of, 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 the, of the database that you know um, or of the environment in general. We call this newsjacking. 
um, where so you're you're leaning on maybe something that's happening in the press, whether it be COVID related or whether it be related to the the recent um, Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, I don't know why that one springs to mind. I was just I'm just a big fan. Um, so using hashtags and things that have happened in the press to make your email stand out in in the inbox. Try not to to overdo it in that respect because our, our outlooks that, that we all have now they're very very intelligent and they start to recognize and monitor how you deal and how you respond to emails so for example when the gdpr came out and everybody was getting emails on a regular basis about gdpr and gdpr this consent that please subscribe to our emails consent consent gdpr gdpr your outlooks would have noticed that over a period of time, you're not even reading these emails, you're just deleting them straight away, unread. So it starts to learn and it starts to say, well, okay, if you're gonna keep deleting every email that you get that has the subject line GDPR, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in the spam folder because you never read them. And so we, we, we as, as individuals, we teach our inbox on how to respond to our email. That's why we make it difficult where as email communicators to receive multiple proofs. So if we send ourselves a copy of our email just to check it over, and then we change a word, and then we send it to ourselves again, and then we send it to ourselves again, and then we send it to ourselves again, it ends up in the spam folder. And we go, what's happening? Why is my email going in the spam folder? It's because your inbox has learned what you do with these emails. You're giving them less than a second's look and you're deleting them straight away. So when it comes to jumping on, on language, don't overdo things um, that are seasonal like Christmas um, or, or Valentine's Day and things like that. Because if you continually delete emails with the subject line of Christmas, you are going to force that email into your spam folder because your, your inbox thinks it's doing you a favor. So just be a little bit careful with that. Um, this one's massive for me and it's not wasting what we call the Johnson box. Um, you might know it as a little bit of preview text that sits directly above the email. It's called the Johnson box, primarily because the first person who ever did it was a chap called Frank Johnson. Um, and so he's been accredited with that little box at the top there. Um, and they're, they're very, very, very important when it comes to email engagement. Why they're very, very important? It's because of this. I call this the second filter when it comes to email comms because we all do it in our day-to-day -day lives. We're on our way to the office, we're going to lunch, we're doing absolutely anything, and we're looking at our phone. And when it comes to the messages on our phone, this is all we can see. This includes the subject line, the from name, and the Johnson box, or the, or the preview text. Now, it doesn't matter how glorious or glamorous or fantastic the email is itself, if you get a combination of these things, these three things wrong, you're going to get swiped. No. No, and we all do it. We're walking around. No, no. And we're basing that decision to delete this email even before we get to the inbox on these three areas, whether it be the from name, the subject line, or the preview text. So if you've got a fantastic subject line and a fantastic um, Johnson box, you can be talking about a 66% chance of your email being kept and being open. It really is that important that these three things aren't wasted. Traditionally, what you'll see in that Johnson box is to view this email, click online. You know, that's not very informative. It's not very engaging. What you want to do is give them a real reason as to why they should be looking and opening your email. I like to see um, questions. Is your subject line asking a question? Is your subject line short enough that on the mobile, it doesn't dot, 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 and you've lost that the, the rest of the subject line? If your subject line is going to be quite long, put the rest of the subject line in the Johnson box. So they've got something to read at all times inside the email. How can the format of emails get involved? You've got past this, you've got past the filter, and now you've arrived in the inbox. So how can we make sure that the emails now follow that engagement protocol and get you some responses uh, based on the fact that you're now actually physically looking at the email itself? This is an email that some of you might recognize. You're all sat here today as victims of an engaging email. We've sent you an email, you've looked at it, it's been relevant, we've told you exactly what's going to happen at the course of this email, and you've engaged with it, you've clicked on it, you've booked this um, booked in to, to be on this webinar. You are victims of a good, engaging email. So how do we structure that? We made sure that the purpose and the um, 
uh, the benefit of this email was very, very clear and right up front using imagery and text. We put a bit of a countdown on the email, um, which you can do with the email marketing platform to, to, to impose a bit of urgency. So you know you're not know gonna miss it. We've used a lot of imagery on the email, very important to make sure that the, the, uh, the email is um, engaging and visual. 42% more um, click rate on emails with images rather than images that don't. We use a little bit of color and that's how we highlight certain areas on the email. So we're using bold text and colors, trying to avoid reds, other colors to, to make the email a little bit stand out. And another good one for certainly for email nowadays is video. We're much more likely to watch a video that we've been sent via a video than wade through um, reams and reams and reams and reams of text. Um, you can say so much more in an email than you can with, with a very, very um, long email. Making sure that the rest of the email has the appropriate clicks and the appropriate calls to action in a variety of different formats. Some people like to click on pictures, some people like to click on text, and some people like to click on buttons. So make sure that all of your calls to action um, are in those sorts of a variety of, of different methods. Certainly on mobile, you've got to make sure that the, the hyperlinks are on buttons so we can't miss with our, with our thumbs uh, when it comes to, to clicking on those emails. Imagery is sometimes difficult to get your hands on um, because uh, a lot of these are royalty protected or you might not have a file library of images you can collect. But there are always websites out there called like pixels.com and Pixabay where you'll be able to, to, to look to, to download a load of royalty free images. Now, regular emails are good, but they 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 sometimes fall into the trap of being easy to, to overlook and, and easy to miss. If you're sending out a regular email every Friday on the nail, it's sometimes a good idea to, to mix that email up a little bit. So how do we gauge when's a, when's a good time to, to, to send an email? Well, we can look at this. Uh, this is a, a campaign here gone out from one of our clients. And we can see there's a lot of relevant information here. They've got an excellent open rate, but fantastic click-through rate um, um, based on the, the volume of the, of the, of the uh, subscriber base. But the important bit I want to take a look at here is the, the peak engagement map. Because this is showing us when our email has been read and at what time of the day and what day of the week. Um, the first thing that stands out for me on this campaign is there's not a single hour or a single square on this heat map where someone isn't opening an email. We have people opening emails at two o'clock on a, on a Saturday, Sunday, Saturday slash Sunday morning. Fantastic pieces of information when it comes to when you should send your email. So we can see a good chunk here of people opening and engaging on the email in Friday afternoon. And we can also see a secondary chunk of, of opens and activity on the Monday morning. Most in particular, that Monday morning is all happening before 9 a.m. So that's all happening in the commuter time when people are on their way to work rather than um, actually sat at their, at their office desk. So this is a great indication on, on using an email marketing platform as when you should send your email. It's a question that I get asked thousands of times in my, in my uh, 18 years in the game is when should I send my email? Now, the DMA used to say you should send an email up Tuesday at two o'clock or 11 o'clock or Thursday at um, two o'clock or 11 o'clock. And that's when you should send an email for, for maximum engagement. And that was all very well and good some, some 15 years ago. But then um, mobile phones came around. And the honest answer now to the question of when should I send my email is I have absolutely no idea. And I've been doing it for 18 years. I don't know when you should send your email marketing campaign. You will be able to find out the information from your reports. You will be able to know exactly when you should be sending your email to your specific database. And the reason why I don't know anymore is again because of these. We have 32% of people reading emails uh, when they're on the commute, which that last slide sort of backs up. We have 63% of people reading emails at the weekend, which was unheard of some, some 10, 15 years ago. Um, but now, again, we have access to our work email when we are at home, when we are in bed. 70% of people reading emails when they're in bed. Personally, I like to watch a bit of TikTok when I'm in bed, but there's a lot of people reading on emails. 57% of people reading emails in the bathroom. That's being polite. What I'm technically saying there is we're reading them when we're on the toilet. 
we cannot get away from our email inboxes. I think two years ago, BMW took the step to turn off the mail server at 5 p.m. at night on Friday, forcing their executives to stop working, that they're experiencing a lot of burnout. Um, and because they have constant access to their emails um, and, and so do your database. We saw that last slide, not a single square where there wasn't a period where the emails were being opened. We open them on holiday. We do put our out of offices on our, on our emails, but we still read the email and we still respond to the ones that we find um, absolutely the most engaging. Relevancy is a massive um, point when it comes to engaging emails. If you're sending the email that the person wants at the time they want it, then, 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 then you've cracked half the battle. Now we see a lot of that in retail, um, certainly when it comes to if you've, say you've been on a DIY website and you've looked at a few lawn mowers, the first thing they'll do is send you some emails or some social media messages about other lawn mowers. They don't waste their time sending you information about the entire rest of the warehouse. They don't start sending you emails about paint and they don't start sending you emails about fencing or ironmongery or doors or anything like that. They just send you emails about lawn mowers because they know that's exactly what you've been looking at. So the emails are incredibly relevant. And so that's going to improve um, the, the click through rate. We have a client who does hospitality and they'll send out a generic email that has uh, Wimbledon and Ascot and the FA Cup and um, any, any sporting event like that. And then they will send out very specific emails to their target database, which is solely about Wimbledon for the ones that they know um, are interested in tennis. And that's when good segmentation comes into it. So you can make sure that your database is segmented properly. So they're getting the columns that are relevant to them. And, and that will help improve engagement because it's a topic that they're, that they're interested in. Trying to make sure that the email as much as you can is personalized also helps relevancy. So adding um, mail merges in the subject line, which was, as we know from the previous slides is very important, adding mail merges to the preview text and then adding mail merges to the, to the body of the email. So the email then becomes very, very personal and very, very relevant um, to that individual. So they are more likely to, to A, keep it in their phone so it's ready for them in their desktop and then engage with it after the event because they feel like it's something very, very relevant and very, very personal to them. Um, no segment is too small for me. If you've got a segment with three people in it, I'd rather send a decent email to three people than a generic email to 40,000 people. Sometimes database sizes, we're all, we're all a little bit guilty and a little bit victim of vanity metrics of the size of our database. I've got a 30,000 strong database, but if you've got 3,000 people opening it, uh, which is only around about 10%, what you've actually got is a 3,000 strong database and the rest of it you're just sending because you feel that you should and you don't want them to, to, to miss out. So segmentation, very important um, when it comes to improving the relevancy and I, I, I swear to you, you'll get a much better response um, if, you, if you've acted on that. So five more must-haves to maximize engagement. Mobile compatible. Um, as, I've, as I've said on numerous occasions today, your mobile is one of the most important devices in our lives. Absolutely everybody is walking around with one of these. Doesn't matter what you are in, in, in life, doesn't matter what you do for a profession, doesn't matter how old you are, from early teenagers right up to my grandparents, they've all got mobile phones. And so your email campaigns have to be mobile compatible. They have to stack. And so the email looks great. Nobody in modern day marketing is going to tolerate having to pinch or having to left to right scroll. You will only tolerate up and down scrolling. And so your email has to be within the confines of a mobile phone view it. And so it has to be mobile responsive. So if you've got two columns of content on an email, on your desktop, on mobile, they stack and they sit on, on top of each other like that. It's so crucial and so important. You will know if you use an email marketing provider, um, the likes of ourselves, that you can see in your reports who is opening on what device, who is opening on an Android, who is opening on an iPhone, who is opening on, uh, on a desktop, what version of Outlook they're opening at. These are all key elements that you need to make sure that your 
and building your emails specific to that mobile compatibility. Timing is absolutely everything. Uh, I send out an email for a restaurant in Soho. And so the, I tend to send those at 8 a.m. in the morning on maybe a Wednesday or a Friday because that's when people are hungry. We've just woken up, we've got out of bed. As we've seen in that previous slide, the first thing we do is we pick this up on our way to the bathroom and we're looking at our emails. Now, if we see an email in there that's talking about food, we're going to engage with it because we're hungry. We've just woken up and got out of bed. So that mm -hmm. timing is absolutely crucial for that. I also um, see emails for rugby clubs and they tend to send their emails out late on Friday at 4 p.m. because that's when people are thinking about the game that's happening on Saturday. It's no point sending on Tuesday, there's four days to go before the game. So timing is, is absolutely crucial in that respect. Always adding value is another one. Very rarely nowadays, um, will you find anybody will do anything for free for you. They need to know what's in it for them. You know, this webinar email was telling you, we're gonna show you some hints and tips in email marketing to maybe help with, with your engagement. We're giving you something. This is what we want you to do. We want you to come along to the webinar so we can give you something. So the email needs to have value um, and, and not be, be devious in any way. Uh, an old marketing manager of mine used to say, there's no prizes for surprises. So don't try and trick someone in, into doing it. You're not, you may get some good engagement on this email, but because you've cried wolf, you're, you're going to damage future campaigns. So always make sure that you're adding good values and nice and good clear CTAs like I said before, try and use buttons as much as you can. Try to avoid having too much hyperlinks in a body of text because on a mobile device, if you're trying to press a link, which is on the third line of a bit of text, and there's another link above it, you're going to start having a little bit of a bad experience because your thumb can cover a lot of real estate on, on an email. And so you want to make sure that these calls to actions are very, very clear, very, very easy um, to click on. And crucially important, measure everything. If you want to maximize engagement, knowing what's worked is absolutely crucial to that. So you can look at an email campaign that you think is absolutely fantastic. You look at your reports, barely anybody's opened it, barely anybody's clicked on it. You're going, okay, back to the drawing board because I'm doing something, there's something not quite right. I'm not engaging with the audience at all here. I'm doing something wrong. Is it in the subject line? Is it in the, uh, the content itself? Something isn't floating the boat of my database. So using your metrics and your analytics will help you um, maybe resend that campaign or completely rewrite it and, and start again. So let's have a quick little recap on the strategy questions that um, we should always sort of ask ourselves every time we, we look to put out a campaign. Do we know the audience that this is going to? Um, are they appropriately segmented? Are we sending it at the time that's right for them? Um, and sometimes don't forget yourself when it comes to um, your, your sending out your email campaigns. You are a human being. You are a victim of email um, communications as much as the next person. When would you want to receive this email? And if you think to yourself, I never read emails between 10 and 12 because I'm always flat out. Well, there's a fair chance that most of your database are exactly the same um, as yourself there. So don't send your emails between 10 and 12. So no, use yourself as a barometer. And if you do something, there's a fair chance that a majority of your database will do exactly the same. Are they grouped efficiently uh, and effectively? Make, as I've said previously, I'd rather send an email to 10 people than 10,000 um, because then I'm going to get the response that I want and I'm going to get the engagement and uh, I'm going to get the return for my investment. I'm going to get my, my efforts managed back. There's, 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 no, there's no prizes for having a 100,000 database, especially if only half of them read it. And can you measure everything? Um, really, really important to, to make sure that you are, you are utilizing those reports and, and utilizing um, your segmentation. Um, I always have a, a segment in my campaign accounts that sets okay anybody i've uploaded in the last three years into this account have they opened an email in the last 12 months now if the answer to that is no i get rid of them and you feel so much better for doing that um, and so before you know it your open rates start to improve uh, and grow up the the um 
the restaurant I mentioned, I've probably got about 80,000 contacts in that account, but I only send the email up to 28 at any given time because the rest of them, who sends mentation and grouping, have basically qualified themselves out. And as a consequence, I get good open rates and I get good click through rates um, on these emails. So it's really important to make sure that we're, we're using those segmentations um, powerfully to, to drive the, the open rates of the campaigns. And be careful with um, vanity metrics like, like open rates and, and click rates. So if I look at my, my inbox here, I've just opened that email. So inside the reports, I've just opened that email for, from Jigsaw Direct. Have I, have I read it? Have I looked at it? Have I clicked on it? No, but I have opened it because the images have been displayed. Have I opened this email? Yes, I have. Have I opened this email? No, I haven't because there's no images downloaded. But now if I start to scroll, I am reading it. Have I opened this email? Yes, I have. because the, the images have been downloaded. Have I clicked on this email? Yes, I have because I've just clicked on that button um, in that sort of area there. So be a little bit wary of, of vanity metrics um, when it comes to your, your campaigns because they can be slightly deceitful on, on what is opened and what, is, um, and what isn't. Um, the big factor is clicks. So having a look at that click to make sure that, yes, that is probably the truest metric in your reports, that this open has been engaged with because it's actually been clicked on. Quick little flick through now of some tactical questions that uh, we should be answering ourselves. Um, the primary one there is, will this email capture the attention within, the, within our fabled eight seconds? Because that's all we get. Um, and where is the most important thing to capture those people in those eight seconds? It's in the subject line and the Johnson box. That could be your only chance to generate any engagement is if people are, are doing uh, are reading and being captured by those two areas. So the subject line, very, very important. The preview box, very important. Relevancy, language, the purpose of the email, the worst kind of email reason, for, or the worst, the worst reason for sending an email campaign is because we always do. And we always send out an email on Friday. That's the worst email. Um, because if, 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 you, if that's all you can say about an email, then it, it's not looking good. Mm. Can the email be skim read? Certainly on a mobile. Can they have a quick look through as they're, as they're flicking on, on through the email? Um, do all the links work? You'd be surprised how many times you see an email campaign with a broken link um, because um, it's been put on the campaign wrong or it's been changed. If someone's uploaded a PDF onto a website and then relocated the PDF to a different folder and it breaks the link, um, it's always worth checking in, in your proof group there. And like I say, the big one down at the bottom there, will it capture the attention on the second filter. So important to make sure that you've got their attention very, very early, well before they're looking at the, the, the campaign itself. That's it from me. Um, I hope there were some bits and pieces in there um, that you found of, of interest. Um, probably uh, for a lot of you, there's a lot of things in there that you, you're currently doing and um, actioning in your campaign. So hopefully it was just a bit of a reassurance that you're doing things Okay, we're all in this together. At the end of the day, there's no right or wrong way of, of putting these together, but hopefully some of these tips will, will enable you to just uh, make a few changes uh, and maximize that engagement. If anybody does have any questions, I think I can see two. Oh, one person says I can't see the slides. Was that the same for everybody? No, I don't I think I think we could see the slides there, but it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll send this presentation through. Um, um, at, uh, at, the end of, uh, at the end of the webinar. Another question here, one of the most important things to measure, um, click rates, um, open rates are for show, click rates are for dough. It's, it's your click rates that you want to really measure and your um, devices, who's opening it on desktop and who's opening it on mobile. Uh, those are the two key things uh, that you should be looking at here at your metrics, along with when is your email being opened the most. And so if it's been if it's been opened at the most at a different time for when you sent it, then you should be looking at sending it at, at that time. So those are sort of the three or four um, combinations of those. Another question here: Can you embed video in an email? No, you can't. You can have a uh, the first frame of a video on an email, and then when they click it, it'll fire open um, the appropriate um, location of the email. It just makes the emails too heavy. 
if you think of a, of a standard video, this webinar, for example, will be close to 80 to 90 megabytes in weight. You can't send an email to, into someone's phone or inbox at 90 megabytes. The spam filter will, will just have none of it. And it'll just be instantly deleted. So what we do is we send a, a link to the video so they can click on it and it will fire open their, if it's on their phone, it will fire open their YouTube app or Vimeo app. If it's on the desktop, it will fire open a browser. That way, but then as well, you can actually see who's who's actually watching the video. Um, so they are traditionally done by a, by a hyperlink. Any more questions? No, nope, I think that's all good. I've taken up um, the 30 minutes of your time that I that I, that I promised I would. Thank you so much uh, for attending. We we will send you through a copy, and uh, hopefully, we'll, oh, there's um, more of a technical one, but news at blinks, e.g. And invite calendar invites. I've learned what doesn't work when opening the Chrome browser. Um, let's we will take that one offline, Kirsty, and um, we'll take a look at that. Yes, calendar invites do open as a. You, you'll be very welcome, Jay. Um, I was I was up in Worcester last week. Teaching some of your colleagues uh, on news app. Um, I missed you out there, but yes, we'll we'll we'll, we'll chat about that offline, Kirsty, on 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 how that operates and works because you can add calendar appointments as as links inside an email. But much the same way as mail tos do, they do fire open a browser browser window. So we'll, we'll have a chat about that offline. Okay, thank you guys. I'm going to let you get on with the rest of your day and look out for for more webinars that uh, that come along and hopefully speak to you all soon. Thank you very much.